Alright, so we're going to be ranking free-to-play mechs based on what stage of the game they are effective in. Now, this is going to be ranked strictly by performance. I'll be letting you know my personal opinion as to whether or not I think it's actually worth buying each mech as I place it. But yeah, these tier labels essentially designate the SP range that each mech is effective in. Starting off strong, we have Aegis. I'm going to put this directly into S tier. This is fantastic mech, honestly. Probably one of the best purchases you could make as a free-to-play player. As soon as you get to tier 5, this should be the first thing that you get. Absolutely worth getting. Next up is Arachnos. Arachnos is gonna go in D because it's not very good. There's a derby event where you can get it for free, but even if you don't get it for free, I'm pretty sure it only costs credits. And for that reason, it is worth getting either way. Because it's cheap, and it is actually very strong when you first get it. The only issue is that, like, as soon as you start moving up in SP and your enemies start getting a little bit stronger, Arachnos folds pretty quickly. Up next is Ares. Ares is pretty solid, definitely better than Arachnos. I'm gonna put in C. You can use it in the sort of lower mid-game SP ranges, but it should ideally be replaced by Aegis pretty much as soon as possible. And even if not, it becomes kind of weak. Even still, Ares is like stupidly strong when you first get it. Absolutely worth getting. Anyway, next up is Bastion. Bastion is a legendary tank for sure, and you'd think it would just immediately be better than Aegis, but it's not. In fact, I'm going to put it in A, not even in S, because I find Bastion increasingly unusable in higher SP ranges. It's not fast, the shield ability can't absorb very much damage, and on top of that, the EMP from the shield doesn't last very long it's not long enough to kill quite a lot of things but if you're in like the 7 to 10 ksp range bastion should do very well by the time you get bastion you should already have aegis so if i'm being honest i would say bastion's a mech you could just skip over it's not really worth getting next up is brick house I'm going to put Brickhouse in B. Brickhouse only costs credits, so a lot of people will get it just because it's cheap. So in that regard, it is worth getting if you're just looking for tier stars. Though, to be honest, most things in tier 8 are garbage. And then the only value comes from the paid-only stuff that's in tier 9, being like Seeker and Deathwalker. So as a free-to-play player, not necessarily worth speedrunning into tier 8. I'd say take your time. You could skip Brickhouse if you wanted to. Next up is Cheetah. Cheetah, I'm going to put in C below Ares. I, I know Cheetah is a grade higher than Ares. It's epic instead of rare, and so you'd think it would do better. But honestly, it just doesn't. The ability is super impractical. Like, if you get a kill, it's probably while you are in the process of also being killed. So, uh, good damage, but it doesn't survive. Would I recommend getting it? Ah, uh, probably not. <laughs> it costs say coins, sort of expensive, and it's not the sort of thing that you'll find a whole lot of value in. Next up is Eclipse. Immediate S tier, top of the line. Eclipse is definitely worth getting. It is the second strongest mech in the game out of everything. Like, Free-to-play, pay-to-win, whatever. Eclipse is the second strongest mech in the game. It is able to counter basically everything. Next up is Gate Crasher. Gate Crasher is going to go in with Bastion. I'm going to put it below Bastion, though. Unfortunately, even though Gate Crasher actually has the best stats, decent speed, 21 kph, uh, basically tank HP, as well as having 32 energy, so it seems phenomenal, but the ability is super bad. It's not very useful, it has a long cooldown, and, you know, if you know anything about the game, then, you know, you'll know that the majority of the strength of mechs comes from their abilities, 
not from their raw stats. Even still, pretty solid in the later mid-game SP ranges, though I wouldn't necessarily recommend buying it. Up next is Guardian. Guardian is probably B, better than Brick House. It could easily be an A if you have the implant that increases its range, but basically nobody does, especially free-to-play players. So I'm going to assume that you don't. With that said, it is much stronger than all of the other rare mechs, but even still, it is just a rare mech, which means that it's not super practical in higher SP ranges. Up next is Juggernaut. Juggernaut is D tier, sadly. You can speed run into tier 3 in a matter of like an hour. And you don't need Juggernaut. I would say you shouldn't be spending A coins on anything in those lower gear hub tiers, just to save it for the stuff that actually matters. So in that regard, Juggernaut's not worth getting, unfortunately. Next up is Killshot. Killshot is really good, but not S tier good. I'm actually going to put it at the back of A tier. The only reason that you get Killshot is just because you don't have Surge or Nomad. It's basically just a fill-in for when you eventually get Surge and Nomad. But even still, as a dash mech, as the fastest mech in the game, tied with Slingshot of course, it is a very effective beacon runner and uh, a, a nice mech to get. For the most part, there's no good fast mechs in like tiers 4 and 5. So by the time you get to tier 6 in the gear hub, I would actually say it is worth getting kill shot for most people. Lancer. Lancer is bottom of D tier. <laughs> Sad but true. Low HP, low energy capacity, and an ability that does not really help you that much. It can be useful early on. 0 to 2000 SP. It's part of the tutorial, so you're going to get it regardless. But yeah, not something I would invest in. MD is slightly better than Lancer, but not by a lot. Suffers from kind of the same issues. It's got a little bit more survivability, but it has significantly less mobility. So, uh, you know, in that regard, kind of a pro-con situation from Lancer. But it still has excruciatingly low energy capacity, meaning that even in early game, it's very, very difficult to make it kill anything. Still, though, it is worth getting since it only costs credits. Up next is Onyx. Onyx is basically the same situation as Gatecrasher, but slightly worse. It has better killing power by a little bit, but, um, you know, it has the same energy capacity, slightly higher ability damage, uh, the same ability cooldown time, but it's a bit slower and has a bit less HP. So in that regard, I would say it's a little bit worse than Gatecrasher. Neither of them are worth getting, though. Orion. I'm going to put it top of A. Very tempted to put it in S, but I'm not going to, and I will explain why in a second. It's in Tier 6, which is unfortunate because there's a lot of things in Tier 6 that you really want to get. The kill shot is uh, really necessary for a lot of people so in a lot of cases you will get kill shot first however orion does perform better it is the anti pay to win mech if you know what you're doing and the enemy doesn't but they just spent a lot of money on some really really strong equipment most of the time you will either lose to that player or it'll be like an incredibly close match if you have an orion it significantly evens the playing field because no matter how tanky they are you weaken them by a stupidly large margin with the hunter's mark with that said though it's not quite s tier and the reasons that by the time you get to like 10,000 plus sp everybody already knows what they're doing uh and even if they don't 
there's a lot of mechs that Orion just simply is not very capable of dealing with. Those mechs being like Seeker, Eclipse, Surge. And so I won't put it in S, but it is incredibly good and definitely worth buying. Up next is Panther. Panther is S tier. When you first get Panther, it is very evident that it is extremely effective at certain things. And that basically does not change regardless of the stage of the game you're in. Honestly, better than Aegis as well. For as much as it saddens me to say it, Panther prefers to keep its distance because it doesn't have cover from all sides, it only has cover from one side. But that cover is completely indestructible, and so long as you play it right, so long as you play it from distance, uh, you also have more firepower than the Aegis, which makes it a bit more useful overall, though they're not necessarily built for the same situations, obviously. Up next is Paragon. Uh, Paragon's D tier, obviously. I'm gonna put it above Juggernaut. It's sort of useful just for the energy capacity. It has heavy energy capacity, meaning, you know, if you maxed it out, you could carry 16 energy weapons. But it is very weak, and pretty much immediately you have access to other heavy mechs that are just better. But of course you start off with this mech, and I don't think it's possible to buy it. So, like, you know, you're gonna have it. Just don't rank it up. Next up is Puma. Puma's basically the early game panther. Slightly better than Paragon, but once again, it's very weak in terms of stats, and it does pretty much immediately get overshadowed by other stuff like Ares. Ares is really good in the early game. It also costs 8 coins, so probably not worth spending those on that. Up next is Redeemer. I'm gonna put Redeemer in B, probably above Brick House, but below Guardian. It's nice, it's pretty strong, but it's not quite the mech that you need it to be when you get it. And if I'm being honest, it does cost A-Coins. It's probably not worth getting, unless you need to get up to the next gear hub tier. You know, you're gonna have to spend A-Coins anyway. Redeemer's definitely better than like some really bad low energy epic weapons. But if you don't have to get it, I would say don't bother. Up next is Redox. Redox also B tier. Better than Brick House. If you were to somehow, I don't know, win it in a playoff or something in like the 4 to 7 KSP range, then it should work pretty good. But anything higher than that, it just won't. It's really slow and it has really low HP. And I don't know of a single mech that's slow and has low HP that actually works well. Like, it's just a terrible combination to have. Definitely not worth spending A-Coins on, in my opinion. Alright, now on to Scorpius. I'm going to put Scorpius in A, above Onyx and Gatecrasher. It's sort of suffers from the same thing as Onyx and Gatecrasher, where it's just a, you know, a half-decent mech with good energy capacity, but a rather lame ability. And as we all know, the abilities are most often the major strengths of a mech. All three of these mechs kind of suffer from having only moderately effective abilities. It has decent speed, good energy capacity, 32, same as Gatecrasher, uh, significantly less HP than Gatecrasher, However, the ability is actually a bit more useful, specifically if you use it as like a javelin rack slash helix rack platform. This can be like an incredibly annoying mech to deal with. Is it worth spending A coins on? Probably not. But if you really love like the helix rack stuff, it's not a bad choice. Next up is Sentinel. Sentinel is better than Ares, but not by a lot. The ability is actually worse, like the way that it works, I should say. It has a smaller shield and it goes upward as opposed to sideways. Sideways is way more convenient because you can block damage that's coming in from an angle. But at very least, the uh, shield on Sentinel is stronger, as well as just the mech itself has better stats. It only costs credits, so a lot of people will get it. 
Uh, the only reason that you would get it is for the sake of tier stars. But by that time, you should already have Aegis. Aegis is way better. There's kind of no reason to use both. Next up is Shadow. Shadow is also C tier, but the bottom of C tier. Its ability is nice. Uh, nicer than Cheetah's for sure. But it has the same problem as Lancer and MD, where the energy capacity is just absolutely awful. And so even though the stealth will keep you alive, it has good speed and you're a small target as well. So you won't necessarily die super quickly, but you're not going to kill anything super quickly either. So there's kind of no point. Worth spending eight coins on? Eh, it's maybe up to you. It is kind of the only effective counter to Javelin slash Helix Rack in the early tiers of the gear hub. The next thing that you get that actually counters it is Aegis in tier five. So, uh, you know, having a shadow from tier 3 can be nice, but it does cost say coins, which is kind of expensive. So I would say that one's up to you. Up next is Slingshot. Slingshot is sadly D tier, but at the top of D tier. It's really fast, just as fast as Killshot. It's incredibly powerful in the first two, even three gear hub tiers. Even with a hanger of less than 1,000, I have like an 800 power hanger free to play account, and I can already feel my slingshot is not doing very much. And that's mostly because of the HP. The HP is really bad. The worst HP in the game, actually, uh, tied with Puma. Up next is Stalker. Stalker is incredibly similar to Brickhouse. Like, they're fairly interchangeable, to be honest. If you had a rank 5 Stalker versus a rank 5 Brickhouse, I probably would choose the rank 5 Stalker, which is why I put it above the Brickhouse. But they're essentially the same. The trade-off is basically uh, you get more speed and you get to heal yourself every time you get a kill, but you have much lower HP so you're not going to be as tanky. For the most part though, these two mechs both are better off with uh, like campy type weapons. Brickhouse isn't particularly good at like tanking damage either, in all fairness. So, uh, you know, between the two, yeah, I would go with Stalker. It does cost A-Coins, but it's a pretty strong one to get, and if you want to get it, then uh, absolutely I can respect that. It is definitely one of the better purchases in tier 4. Next up is Surge. Surge is top of S tier. This is the best mech in the game currently. The best build in the game currently is Surge with Revokers. As a free-to-play player, obviously you can't do that, but you can get incredibly close by using Ember Gun, which are only epic weapons, so they don't even cost that much. This should be the first thing that you get when you get to tier 7. This is the goal. This is the prize. Surge is the counter to basically everything. There are a few things that Surge can't counter, and whatever it can't counter, Eclipse usually can, which is why these two are like the two top mechs. Incredibly strong pair. Next up is Tengu. Tengu is lower tier. 2 to 4 KSP is around where I would find it effective, though I would say it's better than Cheetah and Shadow. I might even put it above Ares, um, but they, these two I would say are very similar. The advantages that Ares has is like extra survivability, obviously, as well as the fact that it has more energy capacity. This has a really strong ability, which of course is incredibly important, and that's what makes it good, but it suffers from super, super low energy capacity, which really keeps it from being able to shine. Even still, very solid mech to get. I believe it is also in tier 4 with Stalker. Uh, it also costs A coins, the same amount of A coins. I would not get both of them. Between the two, I'd go for Stalker. But if you do get Tengu, then it should work pretty much just as well in the short term, just not quite as good in the long term. And lastly, we have Zephyr. Zephyr is, sadly, another very weak epic mech. The strongest of any of the ones in C tier, but it's not particularly good. Uh, it's another situation of it's slow and has low HP, and it's a really, really bad combination to have. 
as well as the fact that the EMP duration is only 3 seconds, so it's like it's not very long. Still though, it is reasonably strong when you first get access to it, as well as the fact that it does only cost credits, similar to Sentinel, so it is worth getting. And yeah, that is all of the free-to-play mechs ranked. And of course, you know, these are ranked by the SP ranges. Anything that works well in 10k plus SP would be even better in like 0 to 2k. So essentially each tier denotes roughly the maximum SP range that each mech would be effective in. In terms of future free-to-play mechs, they do for the most part release in order. The next free-to-play mech should be Nomad. I have no idea if they're actually going to release it or if they're going to hold it for a century and a half like they did with Eclipse. But I believe the one after that is Hemlock, so maybe they skip Nomad and go with Hemlock like they did with Eclipse. Actually, Eclipse came out before Scorpius, but they released Scorpius first. Future mechs that come out as free-to-play should be really nice. There's quite a few mechs here, you know, of the like 37 total mechs in the game. 28 of them are available for free-to-play players, which is, you know, it's over 75% of all the mechs, which sounds great until you realize that less than half of the legendary mechs are available for free-to-play. And most of the legendary mechs that are are the really, really mid ones like these three. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, it can only get better from here. As I mentioned before, in terms of progressing through the gear hub, getting to tier 7 to unlock and buy these two is really, really good. I would say try to do that as quickly as possible and waste as few A coins as possible, because you're going to need a lot to buy these two guys. But then after that, I would mostly just chill, like don't spend your A coins on anything really, because anything past tier 7 is kind of not worth it. There's really no great free-to-play items in tiers 8 or 9. In my opinion, it's all like legendary 16 energy weapons. So yeah, I would kind of take it easy once you get to tier 7. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, let me know what y'all think. Uh, obviously, some of you are going to disagree with me. And, you're, you know, you're certainly free to use whatever you want to use. Just as an example, I recently got some pretty strong mods for Gig Crasher. I've been using it in 10,000 plus SP for a bit, and I've been enjoying it quite a lot. It is pretty strong, but it doesn't hold up to par with most of these other mechs. So I would say its ideal place is in the 7 to 10 KSP range. As always, of course, this tier list is linked in the description if you want to rank these mechs yourself. Feel free to share the results in Discord. Please just don't ping me. But otherwise, yeah, that will be it for me. Appreciate y'all. Take care.